it's Virgil here again another episode of this hatchet example um, finished off last episode in the B3D creating basic lots and uh, this time we're going to mess around with the textures and RV mats so Let's start by going to weapons, melee, blade, data. Have a look at what the hatchet's got. We're going to want to copy those out and slap them in there. And we might as well have a look at the hatchet ones as well. We've got just a co. Yep, we've all seen a co before. It's your base color. And you got your normal. And we've got an SMDI. Start with the normal. So let's go back to open up another window, shall we? So we don't have to keep jumping around. Back to the hatchet. And we've got two normals that came with our model. So let's have a look at them. We'll open them both up with GIMP. See if we can spot the difference. So this one's dark in places, and the other one is light in the same places. They're they're opposite basically. Well, as far as I can tell, they look opposite. So we want to make sure that this one we're kind of looking like how something bumps out. Looks like it poking out. Which one of these looks like they're poking out? They look like they're pitted in. They look like they are poking out. Never really know which is the right one. I believe this one, DX, might be the GL. And one way to find out, and that's put in the RV mat and see how it looks. Light top edges. Now I'm going to go for the, the DX, see what happens. So we're going to export as. I'm calling it Spur Hatchet, so it doesn't match the vanilla. HQ, and we want to save that as a TGA. In GIMP, so we've got exploit as a TGA or a PNG. Just go TGA and take compression and change this view. Right, just list all the movement. There's our TGA. Open that with text view and save that. D -D -D. Save. Once we're in here, I'm going to rename these RV mats. Hmm. 
rename them as well, shall we? I missed the et off the end. Okay, let's open up. All of them. So yeah, there are empty um, CPP and model config, and we've got what's the vanilla hatchet? Don't need that because we're just a copy of it. And these are our hatchets. We'll do the basic one first. Now we've just done our NOHQ. Oh, let's have a look at our file path. Spur hatchet data. No HQ. Just copy the address. And we'll just paste it next to it. Need the P. And there we are. We've got a, a normal map. Let's have a look and see what applying that in the zero lod. Just make sure I saved it first. Yeah, definitely saved it. So much of data. Did we use the right normal map? Only bulldozer can tell. It's going to look a bit odd because it's still the wrong SMDI and AS if it's using an AS in that RV map. There it is. Yeah, the uh, SMDI is still wrong. We're just looking at the lumps and bumps. Are they going? Does the grain look like it's dipping in in the saw bits, the rough bits? I think so. I think that is about it. Quick. Yeah, pretty sure that that was the right RV map. Oh. Normal map, should I say? Part of the RV map. Yeah. It's a guesswork, really. So, next, <coughs> excuse me, we want to do the SMDI. But unlike last time, Last time we had a specular and gloss. This time we have roughness and metallic. So we need to do something about that. In the past I have used... Um, let me find it. It's a video that I used. Gloss specular maps. GIMP tutorial how to make them using GIMP. Be quiet. I'll leave a link to this video if you want to use that. So I'm going to show you another way that I use now. The gloss can be roughness inverted. So let's open that with a GIMP. And just go color invert. And that is our um, gloss. And as far as specular, 
what I use now is this handy tool that again I'll give a link to the download in the description but um Rag Tyson showed me this and it's a real simple tool for making specular and well all of them normal specular and displacement all you've got to do is drop in your color map click what you want go have a look at it and save maps save it in there and now we should have spec so open that with GIMP boom there we go and uh, close them now and we'll create our SMDI same way as we did it last time which is create new check it's the right resolution Put in grayscale background color wants to be white click OK and then we want to take our roughness or gloss in this case control C go here control B slap that on a new layer go to our specular and invert it it's very bright well do a control C and a control V new layer and then simply color components compose and the red wants to be your background the green wants to be our gloss or roughness that's been inverted and the blue wants to be our specular click OK and that doesn't look quite right one of these is wrong maybe I didn't have to invert the specular but for reference what we can do go back to the vanilla and have a look at the vanilla hatchets SMDI yeah that one's much redder less pink let's use this as a reference and try and replicate it here so maybe this layer didn't need inverting let's invert it back and then do layer no colors components compose background gloss and spec that still doesn't look right but we're a bit closer we're more in the red scale I think that one's actually correct so we'll go to channels just have a look at the channels and maybe even at this go save as put on the desktop png save that go find it on the desktop and open it with GIMP Now on this one, if we, so let's compare, get rid of that one. This blue channel's blue, quite bright, whereas this one's really dark. And let's make this one darker. Color, go for a bit of exposure. 
No. That's because we're editing all three. Uncheck those two, so just the blues dark. No. Lower the exposure. There we go. Well, compare it to that. That'll do. Okay, let's have a look at green. Go to this one and have a look at green. It's very bright in the shiny bits and darker in the not so shiny bits. So it's very bright and darker. I think it could do with being a bit darker. So again, colors, exposure. Just lower it a little bit. Yeah, let's give that a go. That's what that looks like. Now that is a lot closer to this than we were. I don't think it's quite perfect yet. But it's a good start, at least. Let's export as. drive, match it, data, change that to SMDI, export, export, and open that with text view, file, save as, VAA, Plug that into the RV map. Save it. Back to Object Builder. Reload Bulldozer. And see how shiny it is, shall we? actually not half bad really it's a little bit the metal doesn't look very metally let's so we can compare it create the, the hatchet proxy again Move it in the Z axis, no, the X axis. And have a look at Bulldozer. Make sure they're both. Kind of seeing the shine on the metal, making sure they look about right. There seems to be some weird shadowing here. I think that might be um, shading in the model. No expert on that. That looks relatively good. I'm not sure if the normal map is right. If it is, it's not very well. It's not deep enough. I'd like it to look rougher. But it's very small here, so. I am just going to experiment and see. So we did it with DX last time. Let's. Copy that. Let's copy them both. Let's put them on my desktop. Copy them over there. So we've got backups of them. And we're going to open up GL. GIMP. GIMP's minimized. There we go. I'm just going to go file. Export as. We 
clean that up with XP. I'll save as. No, we don't want that. Save as PAA. That's saved. Oh, did that shift? Reload just to make sure. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. How lumpy lumpy is it? Yeah, that's the right one. Try and take note of that. GL seemed to be the right uh, normal map. Let's try and get in on the handle. Yeah. Still not very well to find, but it gives it that, that texture. And as far as the SMDI and RV mat settings go, I'm actually pretty happy with that for an example item. Just using the, where, where's it gone? No, wrong one. Oh, I've lost Gimp, Gimp's run away. Yeah, just using that normal map generator to create your specular. Inverting your roughness into a glossiness. And fine tuning it a little bit in Gimp. Seems to have made a relatively nice SMDI and RV map. Now I do still have an AO, so let's add that in as well, see what happens. Now we're GIMP. GIMP. We go in the one that lets you take it, export it as uh, AO in Daisy is AS. PGA, yeah, export, export, where is it, there it is, open that with text view, oh, it doesn't like that as text view, I think I know why that is, we want to go to image mode RGB, not grayscale, Export as TGA, export, export, export. Um, are you gone, folder? There we go. And we want to save that as PAA, save. And then find the AS. I'm just going to copy that, comment that one out, paste this one in there with C that is. Yep, that's right. Save that up. Back to object builder. Reload bulldozer. Yeah, I think that's made a little bit of difference. The area you can see it the most is ambient shadow, so kind of like a shadow that's built into the model. That's how I would do ambient inclusion is AO, Daisy uses AS. Yeah, look around this area, kind of the shadow that's on the model. Do we still have that open? No. Let's 
a little bit of shading there. Obviously you're going to notice it heavy around where the head meets the handle and the, the top and bottom of it all. Yeah, it's just a little like permanent shadow hidden in there. Not too noticeable on this item, but on some items the AS makes a nice, nice addition. So yeah, that is the hatchet, example hatchet, um, textured. Nice. Well, apart from the destruct and damage RV mats, but they are pretty much a case of plugging in your uh, SMDI, no HQ, AS if you've made one. Tweak your speculars a little bit so they're not as shiny and use a vanilla damage texture or make your own. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the damage textures. There we go, Daisy weapons, data weapons, destruct metal, MC. No, it's just, just an overlay. Just map it to your item. You can paint it straight on your item. There's loads of ways you can make one, but for this example, I'll just use these vanilla ones. Time saving. Yeah, texture's done again. We've probably reached about half an hour recording time or somewhere near there. So I think that will do it for this episode. And next episode, we will hack up the model and make some res logs again. Thanks for watching, peeps. I'll catch you next time.